Today, we celebrate World Communion Sunday along with churches and communities all over the world. Today, we celebrate new members who are joining the church later on in our service. Today, we celebrate the 53rd year since Trinity Heights began to worship in person. While we are not in person today, we are gathered across time and space to worship together. I welcome you to this space with me. Our candles are lit to represent the light of Christ among us. I invite you to light your own candle as we begin worship today. Hi, I'm Bob Kratz. Please join me in the call to worship found on your screen. Praise the Lord who is our provider. The Lord is our hope. Our trust is in God. God brought us out of bondage and has made us free. The Lord is our hope. Our trust is in God. Glorious are the deeds of our God and mighty are God's acts. The Lord is our hope. Our trust is in God. As we worship today, let us pray for God's movement in our time together. Let us sing. Our story this morning comes from the book of Exodus. The Israelite people have been freed from slavery in Egypt. They have crossed the Red Sea and danced with Miriam. They have been given manna and quail to sustain them. Today they seek water. Let's hear the words from Exodus 17. The whole Israelite community set out from the desert of Sin, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. They quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses replied, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? But the people were thirsty for water there, and they grumbled against Moses. They said, Why did you bring us up out of Egypt to make us and our children and livestock die of thirst? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, What am I to do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Go out in front of the people, 
Take with you some of the elders of Israel and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile and go. I will stand there before you by the rock of Horeb. Strike the rock and water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel. And he called the place Massa and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and because they tested the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? May God bless the, the reading and the hearing of his holy word. This week, we begin a worship series that focuses on gratitude. Sometimes in teaching, you name what's wrong before you name what's right. And so we do that with this series as we focus on the enemies of gratitude. It's easy for us to say that we should be grateful. Count your blessings, we're told. Even our friend Bing Crosby tells us that if you're worried and can't sleep, count your blessings instead of sheep. But worry is next week, not this week. It's easy to say, just be grateful, but it's hard to do. How do you practice gratitude when all these other real things pull us away from being grateful? We have so many other things calling for our attention, so many things going wrong in the world that we can get lost in those other things instead of being grateful. What are those things? In the coming week, we will use scripture to name some of them. We will talk about disappointment and worry, about entitlement and greed. This week, we talk about nostalgia. I was thinking earlier about the things that I miss about my life before COVID. This change to physical isolation has been hard. It's been good, but I miss some things. Our favorite place to eat as a family was Who Hot. The kids would actually eat vegetables there. We would load up on a plate with the exact amount of protein and vegetables and noodles that we wanted, add a sauce and watch them cook it on the huge griddle. We went almost once a week for a meal. I miss Who Hot. I miss wandering through thrift stores. I'd begun doing this a little bit more lately, but not like before. It was often my Friday morning routine, finish my sermon and then go to the thrift stores to see what top or dress or pants I couldn't live without, all in the name of supporting a worthy charity. I miss shopping. I miss starting up conversations with random people in the grocery store. Bonding over cucumbers is a good way to reach out to someone and start conversation. Now I don't know if they would understand me through my mask and, and who's getting close enough to talk anyway. I miss talking to people. In Bible study this week, we talked about other things we miss about life. Our children, our grandchildren when they were little, our loved ones who have died already, a different time and place where we used to live church and seeing our family of faith in person instead of on a little square on our screen. If we could take this missing something to its extreme, we find ourselves living in the land of nostalgia. Nostalgia is defined as a sentimental longing or wistful affection for the past, typically for a period or place with happy personal associations. We can move from just missing something to wishing we were in that pastime, longing for what was. The Israelites found themselves smack in the middle of nostalgia. In the story before we begin reading, before we began reading this one, the people followed Moses out of slavery in Egypt. They danced in praise of God when they crossed the Red Sea. They received manna and quail when they were hungry. They received water from what was once a bitter stream. Now they're thirsty again. They grumble to Moses and they question his leadership and they begin to wonder if they were better off back in Egypt. This isn't the first time they did this. One chapter earlier, they told Moses they would rather be back in Egypt where the meat and the water was plentiful and they had a place to call home. Today, they remember fondly when they had enough and they wonder why they've left all of that for the unknowns of the desert life. The lens of the past is often rose-colored glasses. 
Nostalgia paints a picture of life in a way that it never really was. The Israelites wanted to go back to the safety and predictability of being a slave. At least then they had water and food to go with making bricks and firstborns being killed in life as slaves. We often look at the past with rose-colored glasses as well. President Trump campaigned on nostalgia, make America great again. That's nostalgia. That's a call to go back to the way things were when coal was king and kids were well-behaved and churches were full and leaders were white and we didn't talk about sex and certainly not sex that was different. Nostalgia is looking back and forgetting that back then women couldn't vote and didn't have jobs except in the home. Nostalgia is forgetting that people of color weren't valued for the things that they offered. Nostalgia is forgetting that men could have affairs and treat women as possessions and nothing was done or said about it. Nostalgia is forgetting about all those things that aren't shown in Norman Rockwell paintings of pretty children and happy families. I had a saint say several times that she missed the good old days, but she liked her indoor plumbing and her washing machine. Nostalgia forgets that our yesterdays aren't all rosy and nice. There's a real enemy to gratitude, and that's nostalgia. Our passage this morning invites us to something more than nostalgia. You see, there's nothing wrong with looking back. The Israelites named different places along the way so that they could remember what had happened at that place. Later in the history of Israel, they would begin Passover celebrations. As part of these celebrations, they would recount their history and celebrate what God had done for them, how God had delivered them. By doing this, by look, looking back, becomes a tool for gratitude. God invites us to look back, not with nostalgia and a longing for how things used to be. God invites us to look back and appreciate where we've come from. Look back and remember what God has done to bring us where we are. Look back and see God's hands in our lives. Look back just two chapters to the story of the people coming through the Red Sea and being given water and manna and quail. Their looking back could ground them in their blessings and set the stage for their current reality. When the Israelites looked back, they could see how God had already cared for them. They could see their blessings and trust for the current situation. Look back in order to trust God for our future. Here at Trinity Heights, we're looking back to our past. It's our anniversary Sunday. 53 years ago, we met for the first time as a church. When we look back, we can see all God has done for us and with us. Countless children and youth met Christ through Pioneer Club and Youth Group and Sunday School and Upward Basketball. Countless lives have changed through the Missions Committee and Faith Works and other mission projects we've done. Countless miles walked through a hiking ministry once upon a time. Countless songs sung and anthems raised and ensembles formed, countless sermons preached, countless people who have come through these doors. God has been faithful, and I am sure that as we look back, we can gain strength for our current reality and our future. Things have changed and are changing in the world around us and within the church, but our constant in this world is a God who has said that he would never leave us nor forsake us. Our constant is a God who claims that his love never ends. Our constant is a God who loved us so much he died on a cross for us. This God gives us hope for a future where we will prosper. This God gives us hope for a future where justice will roll down like thunder. This God gives us hope for a future that we can walk through unafraid. Let's celebrate our past, but use that past to ground us and encourage us for a great future. This week, I invite you to look back, not with nostalgia, but with gratitude. Actually spend some time looking back in your life to times and places that were not so good, but that God used for good.
Spend some time thanking God for what God has already done and celebrate what God will do in your life. This is the way nostalgia can lead us to gratitude. This is the way the past can prepare us for the future. Amen and amen. Let us pray. Loving God, you have created us and you've called us good. You walk beside us, stand before us, and beckon us toward you. Help us to look back with gratitude and to look forward for what you have in store for us. Thank you, God, for your presence and your love that never ends. In the name of Christ we pray, amen. In 2008, I was going through a crisis in my work life. I had gotten to the point where I was not really happy with my job anymore. Um, it paid really well and um, there were lots of perks, but I wasn't happy, I felt sick, I gained weight, uh, I was away from Michael way too much, and I had to make a decision. Um, and I was thinking about retiring, so I contacted the personnel department at State Farm to decide uh, how much money I'd be able to bring home. And uh, I was quite surprised at how little it was. So uh, I called Michael and I told him, uh, here I'm sitting in Minnesota and there you are in Arizona, and I'm not happy and you're far away. I said, but I, I can retire, uh, I, c I can retire now if I want to. I said, but it will mean a big cut in my pay. And I remember Michael told me that, uh, he says, well, honey, he says, I'm gonna let you decide that based on how you feel. But he said, you have to remember, um, we've been through a lot, a lot of stuff in our, our almost 40 years of marriage. And he said, through that whole time, good times, bad times, God has always been with us. He has always taken care of us. So he says, whatever happens, he says, we can depend on him to be with us. He says, why would he leave us now? So after I talked to him, I called up the personnel department, filled out my papers, and I retired. And it was the best thing I ever did. And God did not let us down. One source of gratitude is the fact that we can take our prayers to God who hears us. No matter how big or small, God hears our prayers. We would be honored to pray with you this week. We invite you to send in your prayer requests in one of three ways. Go to our website and fill out a prayer request form. Call our church office and press two to leave a message. Email us at volunteer at thumc.com. We believe in a God who invites us to prayer. Will you pray with me? God, like the Israelites in the wilderness, we too have known your love, and we have experienced your care and provision. You invite us to extend that love to the world around us, to care for others as deeply as we care for ourselves. And so we bring the needs of our world before you now. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the many who do not have enough, enough food to eat or shelter to keep warm, enough employment or money to pay their bills, enough medicine or medical care. We pray for those who have more than enough, but who still struggle to find meaning and purpose in life, those who indulge in dangerous or self-serving activities to dull their pain or loneliness. O oh God, your grace reaches out to all of us. You call us to live as citizens of heaven, working together with one heart and one mind. Strengthen us to live in a manner worthy of the good news that we have received, offering our lives in service of your kingdom, where the last are first and the first are last, and where there is enough grace for us all. We pray all of this through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray by saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. In thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. With gratitude and trust, we invite you to give to the work of the church in the world. We have three ways you can give to our church. Give online at our website. Mail a check to our office. Stop in the office Monday from 9 to 12. While we may be naming those things that keep us from being grateful, let's also consider what we have to celebrate. On this, our anniversary Sunday, we invite you to ponder those things that God has blessed us with. We invite you to send us your own photos this week. Let it, let's praise God with gratitude. Let us pray. Loving and generous God, you provide for us and bless us in more ways than we can number. We give our tithes and offerings to tell of your wondrous and steadfast love, so that those who do not yet know you may also come to your love. In Christ we pray, amen. Today on the anniversary of our church, it is fitting for us to welcome new members. Although neither of these faces are new to Trinity Heights, we welcome two new members today. Hi everybody, I'm Richard and I've been living in Flagstaff with my wife and son since about 2013. Uh, I, I hope I've seen you around the church. Uh, one of the reasons why uh, we're going to be raising our son here in Flagstaff and consider Flagstaff our home is because of uh, feeling welcome in this church and uh, being involved with this community, uh, partly through the, the church. And it, if I'm not mistaken, uh, Mary, we were just talking, I think it was because of you <laughs> that I am now becoming a member of this church. So it, it's a very special for me to share today with you. Thank you. And I'm Mary. Um, I came to Flagstaff in 1968 to go to college and I stayed. And until about four years ago, I you know, married, became a member of this congregation. And four years ago, my ch children <laughs> decided that we needed to move to, Flags to uh, Phoenix and I did. And like we were talking, this is my home. I've, I am so thankful. <laughs> I'm so thankful to be back home. <laughs> it's wonderful to have you both joining the church today. As we welcome new members, we begin by reaffirming our baptismal vows. These vows, or one similar to this, were made for you at your baptism and affirmed at your confirmation, or made for you, or you made them when you were baptized. I see forms of this on social media right now as a reminder of what God calls us to and who we are as Christians. And so, on behalf of the whole church, I ask you, do you renounce the spiritual forces of wickedness, reject the evil powers of this world, and repent of your sin? If so, answer, I do. I do. I do. Do you accept the freedom and power God gives you to resist evil, injustice, and oppression in whatever forms they present themselves? If so, answer, I do. I do. I do. Do you confess Jesus Christ as your Savior, put your whole trust in his grace, and promise to serve him as your Lord in union with the church which Christ has opened to people of all ages 
nations and races? If so, answer, I do. I do. I do. According to the grace given you, will you remain faithful members of Christ's holy church and serve as Christ's representatives in the world? If so, answer, I will. I will. I will. Anytime we welcome new members into the church, we ask the congregation to reaffirm your commitment to Christ. While we can't hear each other today, I invite you to join me. Do you, as Christ's body, the church, reaffirm both your rejection of sin and your commitment to Christ? If so, answer, we do. We do. We do. We do. Now, to be a member, we ask two things of you. First, as members of Christ's universal church, will you be loyal to Christ through the United Methodist Church and do all in your power to strengthen its ministries? If so, answer, I will. I will. I will. And second, will you participate in the ministries of this church with your prayers, your presence, your gifts, your service, and your witness? If so, answer, I will. I will. I will. Members of the household of God, I commend these persons to your love and care. Do all in your power to increase their faith, confirm their hope, and perfect them in love. Join me in our response. We give thanks for all that God has already given you, and we welcome you in Christian love. As members together with you in the body of Christ, and in this congregation of the United Methodist Church, we renew our covenant faithfully for to participate in the ministries of the church by our prayers, our presence, our gifts, our service, and our witness, that in everything God may be glorified through Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Richard, Mary, welcome to the church. Yay! Thank you. Air hug. Air hug. Yay! Yay! Thanks, everybody. <laughs> and finally, today is World Communion Sunday. If you're watching this on Sunday, I invite you to join us at Zoom at 10 o'clock or this afternoon on the patio. We'll receive communion together as we can look around the table and see each other's face. For this morning, I invite you to pray with me. O oh God, as we celebrate World Communion Sunday, we rejoice in the ways that your church is connected through your Son, Jesus Christ. We rejoice for Christians around the world and churches around the world who define themselves by the love that you offer. Around the world, our tables look different and even strange today, but your table is always defined by love. We love one another even by not partaking of one literal loaf. We love one another by wearing masks and distancing our bodies, even though we long to hold hands and hug and sing. Oh God, we know that the first communion meal was a fraught table, just as ours is now. Jesus knew some of his friends would betray him, would deny him, would abandon him, and yet he nourished them anyway just as you nourish us in these strange times. Strengthen us in the coming days to remember. May our remembering connect us to you and to one another, even in such strange times. May the faith of our ancestors continue to live through us today. May we, in turn, reach out in peace and love to others not like us. Bless those who, through receiving support from the World Communion Sunday offering, will pursue their dreams and grow in your love and grace. We pray all of this in the name of Christ. Amen. One of the first songs on our first Sunday here at Trinity Heights was, Oh, for a thousand tongues to sing. I invite you to sing with all the energy that you have in you as we conclude our service. Let's sing.
May the God who is always near bless and keep you on your journey. Glory, honor, and praise be to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, now and always. Amen.